Good morning, Amy. Hey, Kev, how are you today? I'm great. Oh, well, that's good. I'm pretty excited today to hear um, what all of our great vendors have to say today. Uh, I think food inflation is a um, very hot topic right now. Uh, and I was doing a little bit of research leading up to today. And did you know that for the average family of four in Canada right now, uh, that they've paid um, about $1,000 more for food since January 2020? I did not know it was that high. And I know at least on our side of the business, we've been doing everything we can over here at Cisco uh, to help. And we are so grateful to have this vendor community today here to help because our, our customers and the industry are facing the same pressures. So, yeah, uh, I know. I think that there's going to be a lot of great ideas and, you know, we have a lot of great little tips and things to throw in along the way. So I'm really excited to get started. All right, let's roll. Epic. I, I know the production teams uh, got their game going on there for sure. Shout out to Ashton and the behind the scenes crew for that. Well done. We are, we're, we are a restaurant. We're industry obsessed. It's true. It is true. Um, you know, I, uh, like I said, I'm really excited today. I think we have a lot of great vendors on today's first round. So today we're here uh, live right now. Uh, we'll be back again uh, for two more shows later today at 11 and 1. So if you're tuning in now, make sure you tune in later. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to kind of meet our vendors and and and, and see, let's see who we have in this first round. Bring them in. All right. Oh, just me? Just you, James. How are okay. you? Oh, and there's Kyle. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. All right. So. Let's go around the horn here. Uh, Chef Kepi, Maple Leaf, take her away. Okay, so uh, we're gonna, we're going to do two batches for you today. The first one, I'm going to stay with breakfast uh, with with uh, the breakfast sandwich. Again, keeping with the inflation uh, theory here, uh, we've we've got to try and do a little bit more with what we have. So everybody has a benchmark where they sit as far as a, uh, a an egg sandwich, or egg and sausage sandwich goes. So what we're going to try and do today is just look at. Do four quick builds, but taking it up a step from from what your what the what the traditional egg, uh, egg sausage sandwich is, and bringing it up to something that's unique to your operation, and that's not going to cost a lot of money. So what we've got today, I've got three different uh, sausage patties. I've got our uh, pure pork sausage patty. I have our chorizo spicy sausage patty, and we also have our plant based sausage patty. All of them are already fully cooked. So they're going to be able to be heated up in the microwave, in the, uh, on the flat top, in the oven, very quick to be able to, to work with. But we just want to do a quick build with each one of those. Awesome. So I'm, I'm excited to see that. Okay. So yeah. are we going to introduce our other vendors here? And we'll come back to uh, Chef Kepi here. Oh, okay. Sure. Yep. Perfect. Jeanette. Hey, Amy. Nice How's to see going? you. Nice to see I'm you. I'm here. I'm here too, oh, Jeanette. Hey, Kev. Well, actually, Kev, I have some stuff for you later on as we get chatting, so it's all good. I haven't forgotten you for sure. Um, uh, and actually, this one's for you, Kev. We're going to take the boring out of bagels. Um, we're going to work with what some craft products. Um, yeah, we're going to have some fun. Again, right? Ways to save some money, ways to cross-utilize. Um, we're going to, yeah, have some fun with a couple of fun ideas. Awesome. That's great. I look forward to, I love a good bagel. 
<laughs> it looks like you got some great toppings and ideas on deck there. So we're looking forward to that. All right, let's head over to James at Telly. Hey, good morning, Amy, Kevin. How are you guys? Good, how about you? Oh, living the dream here. Hey, today we're talking a bit about tea. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to do a, a green tea float. So uh, a play on uh, the old old days of the seltzer counter, the soda, soda jocks of the 30s and 40s, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to do a, a masala cha, or tea, if you will. So again, something fun, something that incorporates everything you have in your restaurant today. Nothing is unique to bring in. And uh, again, tea. It is the, one of the least expensive uh, base beverages around, number two consumed product in the world. So let's just show some different tea ideas to uh, well earn some revenue for the uh, restaurants. Well, and I think a, a great opportunity for us to show Ted Lasso that if you don't like drinking tea, there's a lot of other ways to enjoy tea. There is. There. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, it's a great seasoning. You can smoke with it. Um, topicals and salads. You can use a, a higher end, um, like loose leaf green. You can uh, sprinkle into salads, really. Um, you can steep with it. Um, uh, steep it and add it to a, um, a warm salad. If you've got a warm steak salad, you can add it too. So there's, tea is, it can reach across all mediums of, 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 of consumption, uh, really. Uh, we tend to think of it in a box or a, or a cup, really, for the most part, but it can go everywhere. Awesome. I do like what, kind of like what Chef Kepi said, is that using what you have. So we're looking forward to, to that. All right, let's head over, last but not least, but Chef Kyle. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Fantastic. I am so excited about today. Um, I'm going to be showcasing some of our Cisco brand Jade Mountain lineup. Um, going to do a couple of dishes that I feel that are, you know, really underutilized in our in our industry. And not only are these dishes economical to make, they are very profitable. So I'm going to be doing a Mongolian style surf and turf. I've got some uh, uh, sesame uh, uh, sweet and sour cauliflower bites, and if I get to it, I'm going to do a glazed uh, duck dish as well. Awesome. Hey, it's just a shout out to whoever's running the drone over there. It's just some epic. <laughs> you you are looking epic in this in this video. That is my teammate, Chef David Piper, and you will see him at eleven o'clock. Awesome. Awesome. Then it's your turn to do the camera work. No pressure. Absolutely. <laughs> I've got a lot to live up to there. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a bit. Uh, fantastic, guys. All right. Uh, let's take. Uh, what are we going to do now, Kev? Where are we going? Well, I think, well, let's just start with uh, Kepi. Let's let's right. head over and uh, we'll go follow the rotation. Everyone's going to do one uh, one dish. Actually, I think we're going to go to a commercial right now, aren't we? First. Craft Hazelnut Spread is here. With the classic taste of roasted hazelnut, skim milk, plus a touch of cocoa, perfect for a quick breakfast or an indulgent start to your day. As a decadent anytime snack, on the go, or even at the office or to create richly satisfying desserts, putting a new twist on your old favorites. Kraft Hazelnut Spread is made with no palm oil and is low in saturated fat. Chocolate Hazelnut Spreads are here to stay, and we're one of the fastest growing dessert ingredients, growing 18% in food service versus the previous year. And with snacking still a powerful trend, the demand for chocolate hazelnut spread filled pastries remains high. Elevate your breakfast, innovate your desserts, or do both. It's the convenient new way to enjoy the taste of chocolate hazelnut. Craft hazelnut spread. And you're on, Chef. I'm just going to get him off of mute. There okay, there we are. Okay, guys. So um, what we're going to do uh, some, some quick breakfast builds. Uh, the idea again, we're trying to just uh, we're, we're trying to, to move the benchmark a little bit from just a regular egg puck, sausage patty, processed cheese on a bread piece of bread. But it doesn't have to be so intricate that it's going to cost you a whole bunch of new ingredients to bring into the operation. And you don't have to you don't have to over promote this problem. You can just make it unique to your operation. And that's all we're trying to do here. So as I started to say before, we've got our three different sausage patties we're going to work with today. I have a plant based sausage patty here. We have our spicy chorizo sausage, and we have our, our, our pure pork uh, sausage patty. All three of them are fully cooked, so you're going to be able to flat top them, do them on the, in, the, on the, in the oven and in the microwave. 
So we're just going to quickly do four builds here, guys. And so we're going to slide this up like that. And then we're just going to go down with the first one. We're going to start with an English muffin. And we're going to put down some spinach. Then we're going to get our pork sausage patty. Goes down on top of that. We're going to add in our egg. Goes on top. We're going to move a little bit of tomato. Fresh shaved parm. And the top of our English muffin. So just a very, very easy one to make. Simple, but it's, it's, it's one step more than what they're used to see, what the customers are used to seeing. With our uh, toasted rye here, we're going to put down a little bit of roasted red pepper. Right under the plate, we're going to get the, again, we're going to use that pork sausage patty here. We're going to put down a second piece of rye, make, 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 a, make a double stack here. Oh, it looks like you melted some cheese on that one. A little bit of cheese slipped in on that one, yeah. And we're going to get a second sausage patty. We'll top it up with a, with a fresh egg. And then we top that one off. You knew so I was going to ask you. Back breakfast. Yeah, okay. You knew I was going to ask you if you had like a fancy name for this because that's like, I haven't seen a breakfast sandwich like that. Well, again, I can put a fancy name to it, but at the end of the day, the operator is going to make his own. Is going to make it his own. So he's going to make it the way he wants it. Like uh, the third one that we're going to do. Yes. We're going to do it the spicy one. So we got. We're going to make use the chorizo. So I've got a jalapeno biscuit. We're going to put down some caramelized onions. All that can be done in advance. Easy to keep around. Then we're going to have our chorizo sausage patty. On that one. Then we got a little bit of cheddar. Can't forget our cheese. And then just a little bit of fresh pico going on top of that. And then it can't be a, it can't be a Mexican style without getting some hot sauce on there as well. And we'll throw the egg in there and on, even on top of that. Boom. And if I can just jump in there, Chef, any, anybody that's on this call that doesn't do a breakfast sandwich right now, you're missing out this on this trend. It, it, it's portable. It's quick. Look, and look at how he's building them right now. Like how quick, like, like the, just three, these three massive ones that he's done. And also keep in mind, don't compare your, those independents that are on here. Don't compare yourself to that, that price that comes up on the commercial from that big national brand here. That's not who you're competing against. Okay. So just, you know, don't be afraid. You know, your customers, trust me, they, they're willing to pay for this. They just want portable and quick, but they still want nutritious. And they want it to look, they, 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 they want to see a bit more effort than they, that you can get from the, from the fast food restaurant chain. Correct. Because, Correct. And this way it's a bit more unique. It's something that they can come back to your operation for. Yes. And that's, and they'll only be able to get it from you. They're, they're, they're right. not going to be able to find this at those other, other those other places. They got to come right. back for it. And there's so, that level of uniqueness, right? Like being yep. a, a little can, bit different, because I think when you look at those national chains, a lot of the, those breakfast options are, it's, basically the same across the board, whereas this is something that's unique in introducing flavors and, and things, but you're not necessarily having a bunch of different components when you think about an inventory and trying to carry inventory and thinking about managing food costs and things like that. I think this is quite doable and, and unique. Absolutely. Uh, and again, with this one too, changing it up, using the different uh, bread components. So I've got, I've got an English muffin, we're doing a, 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 a rye, I've got the biscuit, and then I've also got your your stand uh, your your um, uh, a regular hamburger bun because some operators don't aren't, aren't bringing in a, uh, a an English muffin. So instead, in place of that, they can they can use uh, an existing bread that they have. So Chef this one, oh, go ahead, Jeff. What's that? I was just gonna say you and Amy just nailed it, folks. You don't if you like something here, use your vessel. You don't have to bring in an English muffin. You don't have to bring in the rye. You don't use. And I love that you said that, Chef, about the, the hamburger bun at the end there. Use what you have in your inventory and make it your own. Absolutely. So the the fourth one here on an English on a on a on a hamburger bun, we've got uh, the the plant based patty. Put on some fresh spinach onto that. Then you're going to have another egg going on top. Oh, 
a little bit of fresh tomato. And there you are with your fourth one. So I got four different builds for you here. I've got a, a picture that I've done in, in advance for it. So that's the kind of thing that you can have set up very easy. It's going to stand out from the competitors and you, you know, take whichever components of this that you like. That's what you're going to end up with. Now, just to finish this off, you're, you're already doing the, these sandwiches. Uh, the other thing you can do again, we're, we're back into a brunch component here. If we're still doing a lot of takeouts, what's the idea of actually having, having some danishes and some muffins and then taking these different sandwiches Come on. Wrap them up. Come it's up on. Into a box. You're blowing my mind right now. You can't do, <laughs> Chef, you can't do that. <laughs> wrap them up, wrap them up differently. And now you can have your very own version of a brunch going out. Oh, sweet, savory, something for everybody. So, you know, if you think about everything that's happened in the last close to two years now breakfast is one of the one of the one of the brand one of the areas that's been hurt the most so if people are going to come back for breakfast they may not still be coming out of the store all that much but what you can end up having here is um something that you can take out still so they can still have their sweet you can have your savory of a sandwich it's another way to get a new piece of business if you're a lunch and dinner establishment only this is the this is how you can sort of saddle that 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 day part that you're not doing by starting off your day with the brunch component or adding this through the afternoon but being able to add in the sandwiches as well it's just one more way to try and get a new revenue stream coming in love it well done the, uh, we'll do the picture of the sandwiches there so again I, with, with the full understanding we're talking food inflation here it really was we just wanted to be able to show you a different way of, of of utilizing what you have in your building by bringing in small amounts i mean those those, uh, that, that sausage patty, the pork sausage patty, it's sitting around you know, the 60 cent mark. The plant-based one's a little bit more. It's probably closer to $1.40. Your chorizo's around 75 cents. So you can easily build this sandwich up and charge a bit more. Because at the end of the day, guys, the prices aren't going back down a lot. You've got to, you're going to have to be able to um, charge your customers a bit more because everyone else is getting charged. The, 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 the prices... I mean, we're seeing supply chain issues. Look what's happening in BC right now. Those, on, on, with all that tragedy that's happening, you've also got all the ports that aren't, that aren't bringing product in. This is going to raise prices, and you need to transfer that on to some of your customers, unfortunately. Uh, you, if, if you, you can't just stay with, uh, we've always been this price, but you need to show some value, do a little bit something different. So that was my first set of builds. I hope that uh, inspires. Well that's said. Great. All right. Thanks. We'll, we'll come back to you in a little bit. Um, we'll head over to Jeanette. Okay. Thank you. Hey guys, am I muted or unmuted? Am I good? Yeah, I hear you. Excellent. Uh, we'll get this down yet. So we are going to first talk about bagels. Um, yeah, I've got some colorful stuff in front of me. The reality with food inflation is you either need to increase your sales to offset those costs or you need to decrease those costs. So we've got some ideas today that are going to give you some cost effective options that you can use across any one of the day parts. So whether we're talking breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, so I wanted to just quickly show you some of these things. I mean, simple ideas with, with some bagels, but maybe not your average ordinary ideas. I mean, certainly you have, you know, your cream cheese and berries, peanut butter, banana, the Elvis, but why not get a little more funky with this? Guacamole and maybe some hot Cheetos. Um, cheese and crackers is a fun one. A nacho bagel. Um, I've also done up a grilled cheese with a bagel. No reason why you cannot do a grilled cheese with your bagels. Get into a great lunch item there. Um, wouldn't be my uh, segment if I didn't bacon wrap something. So bacon wrap bagel. And then what about dessert? Um, I've got like a, a sundae, a hot fudge sundae bagel. Um, or birthday cake with a little bit of icing and some donuts and sprinkles on top. Uh, it doesn't have to be just about breakfast when you talk bagels. So what I want to show you, you guys are awful quiet in the background there. Because we're stunned right now. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of, this is what awe looks like for me. So, so everybody in my life who wants to get me to shut up, just amaze me the way that Jeanette does and I won't talk so much. <laughs> so what I want to show you here is um, a simple idea that actually transcends any meal period. 
um, is we're going to throw a breakfast burger together. Um, so whether you serve it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's going to transcend any one of them. So we've got just our regular plain white bagel here. Um, you'll know that they have a, they are cut, but they do have a little bit, little piece you just need to break apart there. So if you do want to cut it in front of your, uh, your guests in your restaurant, um, at the counter, you can still make it look like you do. Um, so that's a great option. So I've taken this, um, and I've just toasted a little one over here a little bit. So what's important about this breakfast burger is while you're cooking that burger in the background, you need to do, you need to cook some egg in the top of this. So this is what's going to make this different from any old breakfast burger. So just very, very carefully, I'm just gonna plop that egg right in the center of that bagel. There is no other vessel that I can think of that comes ready-made with a hole in the top for the egg. Um, so take that, that goes in the oven or on the flat top, whatever it may be, um, as you are gonna go cook that burger as well. So because it's not the Jeanette show and we don't have a full 45 minutes for me, I have cooked some burgers in advance. Now, Kevin, this one made me think of you a little bit because um, I was doing some research and we were speaking earlier about um, that big national chain that does things in an inexpensive way. Um, but I heard they came up with the uh, McHug burger um, or huh. the Big Hug burger. Now, I don't think it got too crazy here, but the whole idea was double patties um, because they hug each other on the vessel and, you know, it makes us think they were hugging our family members. Um, I was kind of an odd thing, but for whatever reason, I thought of you. I, I'm flattered. <laughs> <laughs> I always considered awkward. myself, I always considered it inappropriate when I would like stack two patties together and I'm like, oh, nobody's watching, are they? <laughs> and now you made it feel so special. See? I've made it okay to go double patty. So, I mean, whether breakfast, lunch, dinner, I mean, that's, that's your call. Certainly, um, you know, your, your typical ingredients, you can throw bacon on there. One of Kevin's sausage patties would even be amazing on there as that second um, as well. And then of course, all your other fun toppings. Now, let me just get this. Now you can, I've cooked some of these up in advance. Um, I've done, you know, one a little more done. Um, this one here, beautiful little center on it. This one's a little less done. Um, that's the one that I'm going to use because I like the idea of it just kind of oozing a little bit down the side of that burger. But a simple, simple one. We've all seen breakfast burgers, but we don't typically do them with a bagel. So a bagel is going to add that other element. And Amy, just for you, because I'm going to bring it over here on this board. It's Put a right Christmas there. tree of bagels. A Christmas tree of bagels and stab it. And you've got an amazing, simple menu idea, a breakfast burger, a big hug breakfast burger for you, Kevin, um, that's going to take you through breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Awesome. Uh, Amy, do you notice the, the egg yolk actually oh, do. cascading down the side yeah. of the hug? Oh, my gosh. Jeanette, well, I, I know how Jeanette operates, and I think that was, um, oh, that was a, a fully planned on her end. Oh, uh, typically, you only on a breakfast burger, you see the, the egg on the inside of the burger. So this is the yeah. first time I've seen it on the outside. Um, you know, and I think that Jeanette brought up a few good points about, you know, different things mm -hmm. that you can do to combat food inflation, you know, obviously boosting revenue is the one way and, and uh, the other one is uh, controlling your costs or expenses. Um, so sometimes, you know, I think about when uh, as a consumer, sometimes the way we would battle food inflation on our uh, in our homes is sometimes we consider things like bulk buying. And so how do we does that translate in the restaurant? So when we're actually taking and we're using those elements like the bagel that um, that Jeanette's presented here is we're using it across. So we're not bringing in a bunch of different things, but we're using something consistently throughout the day in a, in, in a variety of dishes. Um, so we're we're maximizing um, using that item and 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 buying that in a larger volume versus a lot of different things in smaller volumes. So, yeah, maximizing one item or a, a handful of items if you want to go a couple flavors. Um, everything bagel would work really well in this one. Do any one of them would. Um, and you're you're maximizing a cost effective option across any one of your menu day parts um, and whether that you know whether all your ingredients again don't have to be crazy expensive um, and you're really going to get creative um, and that's how you're going to end up saving some money awesome 
I think everything was said that needed to be said there. Promise us you'll get a beautiful picture of that board for us, like a still shot if you haven't already. That is just yeah. well done. No, yep, yeah. I will do that. And then we're back with the vegetarian idea next. Awesome. Look yeah. forward. All right. James. Hey, well, that's a that's a tough one to follow. I never <laughs> thought about putting the egg in the uh in the top of the bagel before, but that's uh, something I'm going to try this weekend. We're actually getting feedback from bagels all around the world right now going, finally, they get it. <laughs> they understand me. They understand <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Hey, um, big hug. I think a lot of it, a lot of it to us Canadians specifically is as a tea is a little bit of a, a big hug in the morning or that late afternoon. Um, Tea, well, everyone has tea in the, in the restaurant operations today. We want to take it just to a different level, right? So, you know, building the check or, 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 or building a value around a, a product. So, you know, I, I want to show a green tea float today. Um, it's, it's real easy to build. You have everything in, in stock today. Um, you know, there's, there's different ways, but I'm going to show you one way here to doing it today. So I got a fancy glitter glass. See this fancy glitter glass? Uh, you put a little bit of, uh, so three quarters of the green tea in. Um, important, needs everything needs a little bit of lemon juice. So just a little bit of citric, just to set things apart. Again, it's like building a craft cocktail in, in a way, but using tea as the base. Um, and the tea doesn't have to be cold, room temperature. It can be hot because you're adding cold lemon juice, a um, little bit of cranberry juice here. And you can use any juice you really, really want. Um, I like the cranberry taste to it. Uh, here's the trick and a little bit of value add to um, for today's episode I'm using a uh, club soda from a bottle but the latest trends is back to the old seltzer machines um, some places have the the soda on a gun so it can be made that way the also you can take your tea which I've steeped um, run it through a soda stream you know if you have one in the back of the house or you have a way of seltzering tea itself carbonation whether it be coffee or tea in the future I mean, the next hot trend is going to be carbonation and how you infuse or add effervescence or a little bit of punch to that to that drink. So today I'm going to use the, the bottled um, club soda. Again, just a, a, a little bit. It doesn't need a, a ton of it. It's just to give it a little spark, a little jump on the uh, on the tongue. And again, back to our youth and I grew up with root beer floats and Coke floats and all that good stuff. Um, but adding a new feature, and I've seen it on a few, uh, I guess, foodie sites and everything, and I wanted to try it, is taking a little bit of old-fashioned vanilla ice cream. Now, it doesn't have to be vanilla. Use it whatever you want. Again, what you have in stock. And you're literally, I'm going to lift it up here to the camera. You're going to dump it in and let it float and let it sit for a bit. Just let it sit. You want that ice cream to melt just a little bit so it get a little streams down the side. Um, I'm using paper straws. Uh, straw it. But also, again, back to the back of the day we were younger, you want to add a little spoon because you want to be able to eat that ice cream as it moves its way through. So you're getting a nice tea hit. You already have it in stock. It's, it's not a, an expensive uh, start to a, to a beverage. Generally, you have everything in stock that I've shown you. And you get a, um, I call it a green tea float. Again, any tea you want to use, anything you want to use um, as a base. I brewed a little bit of our wild berry tea. It can be used base as well. But get get unique, get fun with it. Give it to the bartender or your uh, your beverage manager. Something to play with. Um, it can be done at the bar. It can be done in the back of the house. It's very very easy, and that adds value. That adds visual value to the menu. It's going to get you one more sale during the day, one more sale per server. Again, selling tea offsets can help. Can help offset inflationary costs on other categories and you already have it and you have a built-in um, voice to talk to so that's my first beverage um, to try i'm gonna have a little sip so, so if i could add a couple things here before amy does does her thing uh number one folks people are dining out more people are not necessarily dining in as much but we are looking for things when we go for our walks we are looking for things when we go and what better than a tea beverage uh, a concoction of this nature and not only that as a as a parent myself not nothing against i don't want to say anything negative about energy drinks but here is a very nice natural energy drink if you're looking for something to boost you get get a little midday or, or whenever in the day boost so yeah, I appreciate that, Kev. That's right on the thought. That 
can go out hot or cold. And again, I, you know, again, think of it hot. You say walking around in a cup, it's yeah. a little ice cream on the top. It's like you're hearing butter and coffee now more days. Put a little ice cream on top of the tea. That'd be a black tea, in my opinion, uh, yep. hot. But it's something different. It's something that draws attention. It's the I used to call it when I was in the operations, the fajita effect, right? You see a fajita going by and they'll say, oh, I got to have one of those. <laughs> you, you bring it out, you bring out the attention to it, to the table. So that's the first drink today. And I'm going to come back with a masala, a masala cha, if you will, or tea, if you will. So one of the things I was just going to say is that, you know, we mentioned earlier about one way to combat um, food inflation is obviously generating revenue. And so one of the ways is, you know, is using our servers, our front of house staff to be able to use the menu and items on the menu as a, um, a way of storytelling and being able to, um, you know, when you talked earlier before we were prepping for today is when you said a float, you know, I immediately thought of that root beer float of my youth and, and stuff like that. And so I think that some of that staff training that we do to help sell the menu and talk about some of those new things and focusing on the positive and those kind of those experiences and, and, you know, sometimes it, it takes sitting with the staff and making sure they've tried it and how they feel and, and showing how to, how to build it. So, um, really interesting. I think I might like to try that for sure. So we'll, we'll have to bite you over when we can. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. Let's head over to chef Kyle. How's it going guys? Good. How are you? Oh, great. Still. So first dish I'm going to start off with today is going to be utilizing our Jade mountain uh, beef strips with ginger sauce. Um, I'm not going to be utilizing the ginger sauce today. Uh, I've made a Mongolian beef sauce instead, but I think it's really important these days to make sure that we're cross utilizing as many ingredients as we possibly can um, to try to, you know, strip down your menus. Cause a lot of, a lot of us, you know, create these massive menus that uh, we just can't uh, keep all that stock in there. So a dish like this not only can be done Mongolian style, but with the sauce that's in the box already, you can do a, a Calgary beef, uh, or it's also known as a crispy ginger beef. Um, but this one is easily to execute. It's very quick to prep. Um, and it's a very profitable dish as well. I'm just gonna pop some rice in the oven there. So I've dropped it in the fryer. It's about two and a half minutes for that. I'm just gonna pop a couple things in the oven that I've already pre-grilled, the buck choice blanche. So you can literally put this dish out in under five minutes. And I think that's really key right now with, you know, along with the labor shortage that we have in our kitchens, making sure that anything that we put forth is like I mentioned before, easily prepped, easily executable, and most importantly, profitable, right? So we're just gonna run there really quick. So the sauce that I use today for the Mongolian is, uh, I just used a honey garlic sauce that I've added some chili paste to, or a sambal olek, and a little bit of soy sauce, just to richen it up, just a touch. So most things, that uh, we all have in our kitchens already. I've got some parboiled rice here. Just gonna drop that in the bottom of my plate. It's, it's gonna look like a very, very elevated plate when we're done here as well, which is also very important because people wanna have that perceived value. Even though it doesn't cost very much to produce this plate, it's gonna look like it cost a fortune. Those beef strips, those look fantastic. So I'm just gonna sauce them up really quick here. It doesn't take very much drool, sauce Kyle. at all. Sorry? You're making me drool. Oh, <laughs> that's a good thing then. <laughs> all right, good. Pop a couple up on top here. I was worried that rice is gonna collapse, but that's okay. Now, like I said, everything is ready to go, so service ready, right? That's also really key because we want to be turning those tables as fast as we possibly can. So I got well, some baby bok choy. Sorry? 
I was just going to say, you know, one of the things is like looking at our at your menu and adapting it um, to, like you said, to help things run efficiently within the kitchen to, um, you know, manage that labor aspect, minimize waste. Um, you know, those are really key important things when you, you can do that analysis of your menu. Um, I did Absolutely. actually do some reading. Uh, uh, there's a Wall Street Journal article where um, they took a look at um, full service menus over the last um, 18 or so months and that uh, the number of items on on full service menus has decreased by about 20 percent so um you know people are doing that to be you know reducing some of maybe a bit of overhead and um streamlining those things in the kitchen with their staff oh my gosh amy you're collecting a lot of gold stars right now uh i just wanted to say one thing before i forgot and and hopefully chef affirms me on this all this stuff travels pretty well too the, cho the choices that that uh, the chefs made here, I think, if you're doing a lot of takeout, this still like you know you can still wow that looks beautiful by that the way. That does look good. Like, um, but I also very little chef. time to produce. Like, yeah, if you're we watched you there. Sorry. Go, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> like this is going to be really hard for me not to dig in on right now. So. <laughs> but that's my first dish, guys, and like I said, like that does not cost very much to make the produce right there. And you can definitely, definitely sell that for a premium product price. Very nice. I also just want to add to something that Amy said about uh, this finally being a time, our business resource teams, I'm sure both the chefs, or I'm sure all the chefs on the call were grinning when you said that, Amy, because the number one thing we're seeing right now that is hurting hurting inventory and costs for customers is how many items that they're keeping in inventory and on their menu. And to Amy's point, you know, if that number is around 20 or 30%, also look at your reports and take off the slowest movers and the ones that are or and or the ones the items that are sitting in your freezer or fridge the longest like help yourself while you're doing this right use the data awesome well thanks kyle, kyle that is uh looks delicious i would probably attack that skewer like a corner corner on the cob <laughs> maybe but um i look forward to seeing the next dish that you have and and sharing some insights uh let's roll to a commercial and then we'll do round two perfect sounds great guys can't wait to come back At Lynch Foods, we're passionate about flavor. As a Canadian custom manufacturer, we've been developing high quality products for our customers for over 80 years. Sauces, dressings, gravy and soup mixes, toppings and syrups for ice cream and milkshakes, all in packaging ranging from individual portions to retail and bulk formats. For food service, health care, or as industrial ingredients, our processing expertise, innovation kitchen, and research and development team partner to create and provide solutions. Our excellent customer service, world-class certified food safety standards, and experienced nationwide sales force can support your business locally, be a trusted partner, and inspire endless possibilities. All right. Yeah, that music, though, <laughs> made me <laughs> hungry. I don't know if it's smooth, but all right. Yeah. Round two, here we go. Chef Kepi. Okay. And I'm not going to take offense to the fact that you continually put the SVK logo over top of my face when we do the, the big jumble of uh, picture. Just, <laughs> just saying. Okay, so we're going to uh, – there we go. <laughs> Uh, so for round two, we, we're going to stay in the breakfast brunch category. Uh, we want to use a couple of products that uh, you're familiar sure. with, and are, it's probably already in your kitchen today. Uh, email to Jake. Uh, so if we take a look down on the screen here, I've got our uh, Cis the Cisco uh, Tupi ham. I've got this one already cut open. You've probably got one cut open in your kitchen as well. Uh, you've got your uses for that product. We're just going to find a, another way to use some of that up. And at the same time, for the same type of dish, I've got a, the Cisco Reliance uh, breakfast sausage. This is a pure pork, a pure pork raw sausage that uh, is in a lot of operations today. It's got a great value to it. I mean, they're sitting around the twenty-five cent mark a piece for these sausages. So we've got that. And again, your 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 toupee ham is probably around twenty-seven, thirty cents uh, on the ounce on that. So, but we, so we will know exactly how much we're going to use for for these products. So between the two of them. 
I'm going to do a frittata, but a, a little bit, with a little bit different style than what we're used to doing. What we're going to have over here, I got a fry pan started up. I've got some caramelized onions and some peppers in there. We're going to add in some diced potato. And then I've taken some of that, some of those uh, sausages, some fully cooked ones already, so maybe left over from the breakfast. And we're going to add some of that in here as well. And we're going to saute that up to make this filling up. And chef, so that's easy, go easy, for about 10 minutes. Substituted. You're going to get some nice caramelization. And we're going to let that, once that's up to temperature, then we're going to add in some Parmesan cheese generously along with some fresh herbs. I've got some freshly chopped par uh, basil in there as well. And then I've got a mixture of cream and egg. Come on. And that's gonna go in, just gonna stir that together. And we're gonna start this on the, uh, on the stove top here. And then this whole pan's gonna go to the oven. And then we're gonna end up with a frittata. But now, what are we gonna do with that product? So if we go back to the center here, through the magic of television, we're gonna be bringing another one out. And you end up with a frittata coming out of the oven just like that. So you've got your, uh, this, this one actually has the diced ham in it. You're gonna be able to do this up. It should, if you've got the right pan, it's gonna be able to come right out of the pan. And it can go, it can be served up uh, very hot, hot that minute, but this is another product that can actually cool down before it's served. So we're going to be able to take that product out. Now, with this, you're going to, if, if we sit here and cut it up like we would for a pizza, and then again, we're trying to get some more sales in the restaurant. So my thought for this is you get yourself a pizza box. And if you want to send out a brunch, you can do it this easily. Whatever, whatever else you'd like to add on to this order. So you can actually make up a frittata for a takeout, just like that, that simple. So there's, a, there's someone that's coming into your establishment and taking out an entire frittata for the, for the, for the office. And then that can be served still really hot and, and, and cooled off as well. So it was just another way to be able to use your, your extra diced ham or your, or your chopped up breakfast sausages for, for, a, for a dish that's uh, you know, very simple to make. You've got all these ingredients. It's not something people make at home very much, but that's something that very easily, uh, very easily you can actually take the piece out and it, it, it's, it, it's, it's handheld. So we're ready to go. So it was just another way to show a breakfast item that isn't a, isn't a breakfast sandwich. What do you guys think of that one? I think that is amazing. I think that that's a, another great way potentially that you can minimize some waste um, within your operation as well because of some of the things that you might be putting into the frittata. Absolutely, um, yeah. And then I think that, you know, I could see something like that flying out the door like a lot, especially on the weekends where you're maybe you're bundling it, you know, back to your bo a box like you had earlier with pastries and you're kind of creating a, like a, a brunch um, com a bundle of, of, of sorts and, um, yep. you know. And it can also go out on its own in, 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 the, in the restaurant along with a salad from a lunch perspective. But just, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that people aren't doing at home that they'll pay for when they go out inexpensive uh, using your existing products. Use up your ham, use up your sausage. It can be bacon as well, but bacon usually finds a home. So it's just <laughs> the, it's the ham and the sausages that we want to see some new, some, some new sales from. Yeah, no, awesome. Okay. So that was the concept for it. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. All right, Jeanette. I'm back. Awesome. So Cappy had some breakfast ideas. Um, I'm going to take us into a little um, lunch or dinner, probably dinner for this one. Um, we're going to talk about the Ace Craft Brioche today. I'm all about the vessels, obviously. Um, but this is a unique one to talk about. And a lot of people don't realize that Ace Bakery has you know, well-known Ace Bakery, high quality items, but we have a craft lineup. It's a small lineup, it's a growing lineup. And what's unique about that craft lineup is that they are typically a little smaller in size, meaning that you can take maybe that smaller burger patty and still get great bun coverage, a way to save some of that money on your food cost. 
Um, these products also have added cane sugar and sunflower oil, which means they're going to last longer. They've got about that three to four day shelf life compared to the one or two you get out of the traditional ACE products. And they're cheaper because of that sunflower oil, because of that cane sugar, they come in cheaper than our traditional ACE products. So if you're looking for savings, but you want amazing quality, this is a great option. So, of course, the other way to save some money is to look at what you're going to put on that. We showed you some creative ways to it with, you know, again, cross utilizing um, earlier. Kepi used, uh, you know, one of these burger buns for breakfast. Let's take it into dinner. Um, obviously, your burgers, your breakfast sandwich. I even made a grilled cheese out of it um, as well. Right. Again, this is you don't need to have multiple cases in the in the freezer or on the line. You can get creative with what you've got. So you can get that out of the way for a minute. So we're actually going to make a veggie burger right now um, of sorts. My potato patty um, is probably a more appropriate way to look at it. And this is a great way for some savings. You're not going to get rid of that burger off your menu, but you can bring menu ideas in that are cost effective and really cost effective. So where you might not have as low food costs as you might like on the burger, you can get it with an idea like this. So there's been some debate in my house, but I'm calling it a dosa burger. Um, international flavors are a hot topic going into 2022. So this is um, a potato patty done up um, to the nines, I think. So I want to show you the ingredients I got going on here in front of me. So to make these, uh, now this is something that can be done in advance, um, is you're going to be looking at some finely diced cauliflower. Um, I've used some diced green bean. And I've actually done shaved carrot here. You could do slight small diced carrot as well. Now you need to cook this veg up a little bit in advance because um, you want to just take that raw edge off of it. So a few minutes in a pan, a little bit of olive oil. I've used some turmeric paste um, and some garam masala, some chili and some salt, a little lime juice. And of course, um, I always almost forget the ginger. So all of those ingredients um, cooked up in the pan. And then you're going to add that to your um, pre-cooked mashed potato. Um, especially if you got mashed potatoes on the dinner menu, this is a great way, again, to take some of those ingredients and you know use them up. You're, not, you're gonna have less waste by the potential of this kind of combination. So think about those things you're, you're throwing on the side. Um, they might make a great potato patty. So all combined, once your ingredients are put together, look at that color. Right, yeah. and this is, if you had some smell vision right now, um, this is, this smells so good. Um, and it is definitely with that garam masala, you've got that Indian flavor in there, um, a little bit of heat, as much as you want really. And then you're really just gonna make those patties um, as big as you want. I mean, I've made them obviously to fit that, that bun, um, pack them in nicely. Um, I will note, by the way, one ingredient I just about missed, believe it or not, a little soaked sliced bread. That soaked sliced bread added into the mixture, take that bread out of the water, squeeze all that extra water out of it, add that in, that's gonna add some starch to your mixture and that's actually gonna help it stay together. Um, you can obviously get away without this if you wanna go with something a little more gluten-free, but since we're throwing it on a bun, Today, we didn't worry too much about that one. <laughs> would it work? Would it still work with, like, if you use gluten-free bread? It would. It, was, right? it, it wouldn't have the same. It would be more of a, a texture modification ah, okay. than it would. But you could you know, modify the uh, the recipe slightly just to give you that um, a little more stick, maybe, you know, to it. So there's definitely some options to go if you want to go gluten-free. So I've done this up. So, again, get that beautiful mixture out of the way. If we take um, our brioche, now again, you've got a brioche, you've got a little bit of that yellow eggy color in there, a little bit of a glaze on top. Um, and I've done up a couple of these patties in advance. Um, again, because we don't have all that much time. Nice, beautiful, thick potato patty. You know your potatoes, your carrots, your cauliflower, those aren't the things costing you a ton of money. So throw that on the bun. Um, Kevin, I could double it for you, but that's a really big, potato <laughs> <laughs> my my spouse would be extremely pleased for me to double my vegetable intake so thank you for that well there you go we could double it up if we want to um so the one thing i like with this because you do have a bit of spice and a bit of heat a little bit of a mango chutney 
um, is an amazing addition. Um, I like a little cilantro in there um, just to add that. Some tomato, a little bit of red onion. If I can just add into, uh, I, I, I can hear in my head some of the folks that uh, relentlessly follow case costs. Oh, Jeanette, have you seen the cost of a case of cauliflower recently or whatever? <laughs> what she is referring to is the breakdown of a recipe cost. Okay, when you actually take a lot of those ingredients and break them down, and we have been helping our customers like never before break down recipe costs. I'm not saying that prices haven't increased. You're seeing the statistics come up here on the screen. You're seeing it in the news. But but please do if you haven't done this already, do the breakdown per item and per ingredient so you know. So and and it, it'll help you actually. I think it'll help the anxiousness that we're seeing when these costs come through, right? Because it, it when it actually breaks down to a recipe like Jeanette's doing here, it's not nearly as much. And then you realize you don't have to raise your prices as much to keep in line with that inflation. That and that's absolutely true. Just to give you some perspective, eight pat about eight patties of the size I just used. So that good size, you know, four to five inch patty. Um, that's a nice thick one too. About eight of those came out of one recipe, which was equivalent to four potatoes, about a cup of diced cauliflower, um, about a half a cup of, of green beans and carrots. So we're not talking about a ton of ingredients here. You're just talking about, you know, the creativity to pull it together and certainly going to be much more cost effective than many of those proteins out there. We know that the proteins are strained in cost. So if you can get amazing flavor out of, of, of some vegetarian options and something homemade, we all strive for that, right? In the restaurant, something with that homemade appeal, make it your own. I mean, this is completely personalizable right? Make it your own recipe with your own flair, your own added touch, and you end up with this amazing burger to offer on your menu. Drooling, drooling. <laughs> this is the one that's going to be my lunch, but I, I definitely couldn't double patty it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, well, we need to wash that down. So let's head over to James at Tetley. You know, Segway. Segway is awesome. You know, and I'm, I'm like starving over here and I'm doing beverages. Um, so if I could somehow get those sandwiches, it would be fantastic. Um, hitting on the garam masala, I'm taking a little, uh, uh, I guess, a journey myself. Um, I went to India a couple of years ago and got to experience uh, India as, uh, as anyone can. And, you know, a fond memory was going to those little, uh, I'll call it tea, but cha, cha carts and getting a, uh, a mug of cha tea and then on clay thing and, and smashing it and for a couple of rupees and, you, and you're laughing. Um, tea can be an experience uh, too. It can take you in many different ways and journey, whether it be memory or um, going with the lovely sandwiches we saw and, and, and meals. But you know, most restaurants have a teapot, and they you can sell a tea in a pot for a, a group event, or again, adding to the menu, adding something different. So I'm going to build um, my version of a, of a chai tea, something you can make yourself. And if not, again, you have all the ingredients. You have the tea in, in, in house and you can build it. Again, it's an experience and it's a value add and it's a premium. So if you can get, you know, seven or eight dollars for a pot of tea because of an experience, not just the orange pico in and not to put orange pico down because many people like it, but then elevating it, elevating it up. So, and there's two ways of making this. Um, today I'm going to use the uh, hot water tower so it's got boiling water in it, but you can make it on a stove top. Again, standard pot and what you're going to do and, and instead of, I'm a little little far away here and I do apologize but it is you know filling up I'm use bottom here but you can boil water and tea bags I put four tea bags in because you want it strong you don't want it to be weak cha or uh, tea in India on the street from the street vendor is very very um, a lot of body a lot of strength a lot of lot of impact so here I have some condensed milk and again, it goes in the same time. Now I do, um, I put about two tablespoons in and you let it steep with the tea, with the water, and you make it a, a little bit of a, a, almost like a slurry. So I'm putting a little bit more in because I like to, I, I like it a little stronger. Just give it a little mix. So again, because that strong, milky, and it's steeping. So while you, while we talk and go through it's steeping. Now here's where the chai, the chai comes to. Again, classic pepper grinder couple turns and you can use whole peppercorns if you want to 
a little star anise, and I use ground. I'm using ground today because I think when you grind the spice, it allows you to release the flavor right, right away. So you're not letting it sit as long, or you don't have to. But of course, you can use full one full anise in the pot. So I'm just going to use a little little shake, which is about a quarter teaspoon. Cardamom. Again, visually, you can go for whole pods. Um, just give them a little crush. You want to crush them down just a little, or again, ground cardamom, a little shake. And depending on what part of India you go to, it, every cha is a little bit different. Little cha is a little bit different. North, south. And you can smell the cardamom just kind of cooking away in the in the hot liquid. Just a touch of cloves, and I mean just a touch. You don't want tons in there. Again, cinnamon. We all have these spices. So it's a lovely uh, brand of spice. And again, a little little tap tap. And you can do specific recipes that you really really want um, to come out of it. But again, you're making it your own. Mixing. And I use a bodum here on on purpose. Because I want to strain it. Because those spices are going to be floating in. Oh, you know what? Again, I too forget the ginger once in a while. Slicing up some ginger. And again, it doesn't have to be peeled. It just has to be chopped. Break it up. Let those oils come out. And let it cook a little bit in the hot water hot in, in with the condensed milk. Again, you want to be stirring. And this is a table experience. So once this is built, and it can be built in the kitchen, it becomes a table experience. So it either comes out in a bottom. And I'm just going to push down, and I don't need to go super slow. Push down, have it out. So it can go out the table like this, straight on bottom for two people. You're going to fill it up. Or again, you can pour it into the teapot. Again, table flare a little bit, little bit more. I have a strainer. Simple strainer on a teacup where the guest or even the server at the start of it can pour the first. And I like to pour from a little bit of height. Because it puts a little bit of bubble in, gives a little bit of little bit of flair to it. Taking it out, what you have there is a your own chai masala. Masala means spice, right? Cha tea to have um, as a as a add-on menu. It's a day park, so we're doing that brunch piece where people are coming in, where they can have a brunch with the the quiche and the frittatas. This is something you can go to the table with it. And it's another another way of offsetting some of the costs of, of, of food items, meat, protein, vegetable, with a, with a beverage. And it's experience, and it's, it's memory, and it's something different. You want to make something your own in a type of beverage. And for really pennies, I mean, I use four tea bags. You can do the, you check your invoicing on that, what it costs, under 20 cents. You're looking at uh, four tea bags, a little bit of condensed milk, and the spices you already have, and you're giving you an experience. And the odor, of it is a, is a straight up chai. The condensed milk is a little bit sweeter. Oh, reminds me, reminds me, brings me back to being in Bangalore, Bangalore, Bangalore. Beautiful, but it's like being on the street. So it's a memory invoking, a little bit of pizzazz to the table and beverage, and another way to use tea. Remember, you're not paying a lot for tea, but you're selling tea for a lot. So when you look at your menu, and we've talked a bit about today. Looking at that menu and being unbiased on what you want, what makes you revenue, what brings in customers, what's hot, what's trendy, um, and flavors from Asia, South Asia, and you can even carbonate this too if you wanted to, really, really have a hook on people's taste. Remember, leaving their home after relatively a two-year hiatus, um, and you're, you're kind of bringing them back in on stuff they trust and, and, and like, and maybe they want to explore a bit more where we haven't been able to explore um, for a bit. So, Thank cha, you so easy. much. Awesome. All right, we got on to our last uh, last of this group. Fantastic. Yeah. So I'm gonna do a, a sweet and sour sticky cauliflower. Um, so this can be done with fresh or frozen cauliflower. Um, I'm using our, our Cisco Imperial Fresh Cauliflower Florets. Um, and our Cisco brand uh, batter mix. So really quickly batter those up, you know, drop those down. And if you're buying fresh cauliflower, do not throw any of it out, please. Throw all of your little bits and pieces into a food processor, make your own cauliflower rice, okay? You really don't wanna be wasting anything these days. Uh, with the price of food, you really gotta be, you know, really keeping a really close eye on food waste. Um, also, a really, really good time to start rechecking all of your food costing. Make sure it's up to date. Make sure that you've got portion control in place. These are all 
small steps that you can take to really ensure that you're maximizing your profit these days. And chef, if I could just jump in there and I don't want to speak for you, but I'm assuming you're like the rest of the chefs. You actually enjoy doing that stuff, correct? So anybody that's listening on the call going, well, I don't have time to do that. Reach out to our culinarians, to our experts. They want to help. Yeah, our, our BR departments, our business resources, we are there to help you through that. We, I have programs I can send out, or if you, can, if you have all your recipes in place, send me all the information that I need. I will help you cost your recipes out. I will make sure that you are in the right range to make sure that you are being profitable. That's what our business resources teams are for, and that's what we're here to do. All right, nice and quick. Again, a very, very fast dish to prepare and make. I just made this cauliflower rice today. Added a little bit of julienne red pepper in there just to brighten it up just a touch. We've got our, I don't know. These things just look fantastic. And very, very simple. Like I said, I just took our batter mix, I dipped it in our batter, dipped it back into the batter flour just to give it that really crusty look. I'm using our Jade Mountain sweet and sour sauce that I again added a little bit of sambal olic to and a touch of soy sauce is again just to richen it up. It doesn't need it, but for this dish, I really wanted to enhance that. If you're going to add fresh vegetables, possibly think of a frozen. We have a lot of high quality frozen vegetables that you can utilize these days that it's really hard to tell that they are actually frozen. And if I can jump in there for a chef check, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. For a sec, <laughs> chef, uh, not all frozen vegetables are created equal. So when he says that, if you've had an experience with a soggy or wet frozen vegetable, that is not the case for our Cisco brand frozen vegetables. So I just want—I think it's important to note that that you, what, what he's referring to there. And I think oh, all, absolutely all and of our Cisco couple. branded vegetables they're they're frozen within hours of harvest. So that's also important 100 percent. like our, our our frozen vegetables have come a long way and i have a couple tricks that if you reach out again to your your culinary specialist i'm glad to share those with you to make sure that your vegetables come out still looking very very fresh and not discolored too much okay a lot of times people overcook them and then you start turning brown it does not look appealing so there's a few ways that you can make sure that you retain that color and there again that was a very, very quick, simple dish. That Kyle, I really, I, really enjoyed. I, I smell an SVK short on on vegetables coming from you. <laughs> I think you do. I think that's a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> All right. Well, that looks delicious. Thank you so much. Uh, a My lot of pleasure. great ideas, Kevin. Yes, Are like a lot of great ideas. I'm starving, actually. I yes. know. I know. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm really excited. We're uh, we're just starting the day, and a lot of great ideas. A lot of great tips a lot of great insights from our chefs um as well as you kev uh so i'm looking forward to coming back here at 11 o'clock we're back round two we've got more vendors more ideas um and uh i'm looking i'm looking forward to it yeah really looking forward to it. we got uh floating leaf lasan lester's Oli Mel, and then we got chef david another one of our cisco chefs doing some uh uh, doing some Cisco brand stuff for us. And I just want to say thanks to all the chefs already this morning for their amazing ideas for get again, getting out of your comfort zones and bringing value, right? Like the people are, this is, we're in a challenging time, but there are, you have provided one solution after the next. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you uh, on the flip side and, and hope to see you uh, tuning in at uh, 11 o'clock.